going to be demonstrating how to operate the Schwinn BPA 750. The customers are coming all the way from Texas and uh, we're going to teach him all the ins and outs of the operation on the machine, how to clean it, how to maintain it, and uh, uh, Harold here is going to be helping us with that. You know, the forward and reverse, that's one. Um, to, to start these, they have a cutoff switch. Power. It's the main cutoff to the battery. Okay. So without it, it cuts the whole system down. That way you don't drain it from the from the forward versus valve. In the front here, you got you got forward and reverse on S1, reverse, neutral, forward, right? So um, that's a prefix um, to, to the on button. You turn it on, whatever function it in, it's going to do. Um, if you left it on and you put it in neutral, it's going to cut it all off. It's just an override. That switch runs this forward reverse valve. That's it. They call it an HOS valve. And manually, you'll see the button here on top. If you lost all power on the engine, alternator, battery, whatever, uh, manually you put it forward and depress that button, it'll start firing. Manually. Uh, that's the difference between a uh, boots and a swing. The swing is more mechanical, uh, boots is more electronic. Meaning, if something went wrong with the machine or with the with the power in the machine, you can press this little button and it'll stroke one time. Press it again, it strokes the other way. Is that correct, Harold? Correct. Or you just leave your finger on it. Or you leave your finger on it and, and, and it does it continuously. So so the remote is just an extension of this switch here. You, you would leave it on and then turn it off and on. Right? If you leave this off and try to turn it, it won't work. Right? You leave it on, turn it off and on. Um, volume control, that's, that speeds up the pistons. Just like probably on the last swing or the read that you guys were running. Same, same difference. Um, you got your, your uh, main tank filter here and your hydraulic tank here. That, that fluid is AW46, hydraulic fluid. AW46. Anywhere from 46. There's a low part on the tank. Um, when the tank gets hot, cold, hot, cold, you get condensation. The droplets run down. There's a V at the bottom of this tank. Here is the drain. Here. Once a week, you're going to do that, just like on your reeds. If you don't, you better start. Um, these Rex Roth don't take kindly to water. Um, you know, a bottle cap full of water, that's it, it'll blow. I mean, it, I've seen them with the hair. Um, the red cherry cloth, the little hairs, it'll blow a sure shit. That's how, that's how close the tolerances are on the pumps. <clears throat> um, the system is a closed system, meaning that the oil returns to itself and just keeps adding. It never, you can't theoretically contaminate it because on the return, it's filtering. The only way you can fil uh, contaminate it is if you add oil or if you don't wash the water box out. Okay. Right? That's the only way you can contaminate it. Now, um, once a year, you're gonna clean this out. Um, okay. Whether it be a filter cart or just putting new oil in. But you filter it going out, filter it, come ba back in. There's one inspection port you take off. What I do is pray, pray clean and vacuum it. Put it back on once a year. And that'll give you, AW46 is anywhere 4,600 hours. You'll get your 4,000 hours to clean it. If you don't, it'll turn black and that's it, it's done. There's, uh, you know, $400 worth of oil. So, it, 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 you know, to get your longevity out of your oil, you know, you can replace it every year if you want to. It's money you're spending. Okay, so on the water box, we're leaning into the water box here. Right? So, you got a simple drain plug and a stopper. That's it. You're going to fill this up and drain it on the job. So you get to the job, fill it up. After you get done with the job, pour it out. The, the reason why um, to dump it and not leave it in the water box for the next job is um, there's a set of glands in here that are Teflon. As that rod goes in and out, it keeps the oil behind the Teflon. Right. What happens is when that Teflon gets hot, it opens up. When that water cools off, like a straw, 
it closes the first time you start in the morning, boom, mm -hmm. right back to the tank. A couple times of that, you'll get a bunch of water in there, boom, it'll blow. So that's the reason why you, you always dump at the end of the day. Okay. You leave it dry. Um, there's four bolts on the machine. You'll see where the dog bone is. Let me go over. You say, guys, stay here, and I'll go around here. Now, at the end of the job, it, it, when you're dumping the water, you're doing much more than dumping the water. You're checking for these four bolts here. They will get loose, especially if you add another piston cup, the rubber cup in the back of it. You take these four bolts off, you take the dog bone out, you slide it up, put a rake on it, and pull it back, and it'll pull the piston out. Real simple. Okay. Um, the first time you do it, it might take you about two hours. After that, it's like riding a bike. You always remember. You'll get faster. I've seen guys do them in 10 minutes. <laughs> They're pretty efficient. Um, reeds are more rebuildable. You take them out, you rebuild them, stick them back in. These are a one-shot deal. Same thing. They cost about the same amount of money. So when you are uh, draining your water box, you're checking for the four bolts. One comes by, the other one comes by. Stop. You're done. Close it up. Boom. That's it. Um, you got fuel filter, oil filter, air filter, straight up. And like I was saying on the hydraulic side for your main tank. You're going to change this at 250 hours, engine hours. 10W30 on the engine. Um, your belts are over here. You can go through Deutsch, but Napa matches them up pretty good. And it's just a one wire alternator, just like on a GM. Okay. Uh, fuel tank battery 15 gallons in 31c screws up battery right so you got um hydraulic tank uh, come and work it to the ass end well um you got your uh trailer bearings here for your uh bearing buddies squeeze them once a month it goes on mileage you know you get a thousand miles that grease them. if you don't then do it once a month so when you guys get back home you should grease it because right. you're gonna be driving a thousand miles we use submersible LED lights, so they're, they're good. You stand on them, they're gonna break them, you know what I mean? But theoretically, they'll, they'll handle the concrete and the water pretty good. Um, on the rear end, you got the agitator motor, which runs through the shaft, and it's got two set of bearings. And over here is the control. Neutral, forward, neutral, reverse. This thing runs, the whole thing runs at about 200 bar. So when you lift that grade up, make sure it's in neutral or the engine's off, because it will pull you in. It will, okay. and it, it ain't gonna stop. It you'll pull you right in until it breaks, rips something off. I guarantee you that. Just like sticking uh, your hand here in the rock valve. Never, never go past this joint. Even though when you see it, you're gonna see a kidney seal. Never go past the ring. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've replaced hoses. I just wash it out. Oh, I mean, you don't, you don't cut a four by four in half. It won't stop with your arm. Trust me. No. Won't. Okay, so um, you, you've got. Uh, Five places to grease. One, two on the far side. Three, your outlet bearing. Four and five. And one, one's for your shift lever, and the other one's for your inner bearing. Right? And you're gonna do this at 50 yards. So when 50 pulls off and 60 backs up, two pops. Boom, boom. Or at the end of the job. And at the end of the job, correct. Because they're normally always pumping about 30 yards. They're doing swimming pools. Okay, so, so the theory is behind it, you've got the concrete in the hopper all day long, and it's, it's constantly pushing against the bearing, the grease. The grout enters it, just a little bit, not much. At the end of the job, you force it back out into the hopper. So the next day, it's pure grease. If you wait to get back to the yard, the grout has already hardened. Well, it just keeps creeping and creeping and farther and farther. It locks the bearing up. You know, they're $400 each bearing. The SN could be up to $5,000. So, I'm going to give you some grease now. So, but in the longevity, mm -hmm. it's going to be worth it. Instead of that black graphite, where there's no pressure. You know what I mean? This stuff, the, I, I don't know, you know how a car engine works? Okay, so you got the cam, and then you got the cam bushing that holds the cam up. There's no bearing. The oil is the bearing, correct? When you lose oil, boom, it spins the main bearing, right? Same thing in here. There's a brass bushing inside of a steel, and the grease is the bearing. 
you lose the grease, you lose the bearing. You gotta pull the brash and you'll twist it right out of there. So this, this grease will give you longevity. It's about six dollars a tube versus you know a dollar for that black graphite, but it's well worth it. Mm -hmm. Grease is cheap. You know, you buy the case of it. I would think, Harold, that the most important thing here is grease, don't you agree? In order for him to maintain this pump in good shape, every single day, when he leaves in the morning, he needs to check that the machine was greased previously, and every time he finishes on a job, he needs to grease it again, every single time. That's the most important thing that will maintain this pump in good shape for you. Yeah, because it's working valid. Every time I go into it, I always find something else. Um, you, you didn't do this bearing or this bearing, so I go in and change those two. Well, now the cut ring's worn. It's at 40%. <coughs> uh, we'll take that out too. And you're 5,000 in the hole right now. Just that easy. Let it all wear out together, and you replace it all. You know? It goes on yardage, but you should, you know, theoretically, you should get about four, maybe five years out of it. You should, theoretically. That goes on yardage. If you're doing 10,000 yards, no, you're not going to get <laughs> But, you know, in theory, if you're only doing 30 yards out of whack four days a week, very real you could get four years out of it. Gotcha. Very Harold, um, about the hydraulic oil and the condensation, I explained this earlier to them about removing it once a week. So yeah, I think I've already told we, you, about you, that. you already went through that? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then we got the hydraulic oil and the temperature. What kind of temperature they should be aiming for always? So it's gonna it should be somewhere around here. And the reason why that black and red line is... You see that red line in there? That's the temperature um, right, right. gauge. So so your red is your critical, if you're getting too low, and black is, that's where you want to stay. That gives you about three inches of travel. As oil heats up, it expands. If you fill it all the way up, and the first time it gets hot, pew, come around the top. You say, oh, I got a problem. <coughs> expand it. So that's the reason why the black mark is there. And then you, then you got, in increments of 10, you got your temperature. So you should see about 135 in Texas. It might, it might be 135, 140. And they're pretty efficient. If you dump the water box and you fill it right back up and stroke it a few times, it'll get real cold real quick. And that's much where your heat is in the pit cylinder. So it's, it's really easy. These things uh, put swing on the map. These models. Um, they built, you know, a million of them. But everybody liked them so much. And, and if you go to the Bahamas, you, know, you, you go rock and get one of these things. They're all over the Bahamas. That's what built Bahamas. These pumps here. I know of three that built the, I, I went over there for a year and a half and built that Merv Griffin Island. We had three of them running 24 7. Never slowed down, never picked up, nothing. These things put them on the map. Good pumps. Really yeah. good pumps. If you keep the oil clean and you give them grease, the great pumps. Uh, you give them to a bad operator, ooh, watch out. You put an asshole on them, you're good. You know what I mean? Got you. Now, um, it, about the um, the actual operation when they're when they're gonna be pumping concrete, um, the idea is to do a quick uh, demonstration on how to do it. Obviously, we already went through the controls and stuff like that, but the idea would be to show him, show them how it works and everything, how they find how they can find a plug. Like me, but this is, let me tell you how I, how I do it. Okay, so you know um, about the hopper is gonna hold about a one wheel barrel. And if you have 125 foot of hose, you got another wheelbarrow. So you got two wheelbarrows, right? 11 wheelbarrows make a yard of it. So w when I when he gets to the edge of the slab, I tell him to cut me off when you need two wheelbarrows. I'll stop the driver and I'll pump that wheelbarrow down. And I'll look to see if he's got another wheelbarrow. If he, if he doesn't, if he needs a wheelbarrow and a half, I fill it halfway up, pump that out, right? I pull the driver off. I start filling water up from the bottom to the top, right? When it gets to the top, I turn the machine on all the way out with one, with one motion. If you don't stop halfway through, it'll separate. Once you turn the machine on, whoa, there ain't no stopping. I'm going. So he's at the edge of the form. He's pumping out. When he gets water, it goes off the side. Yep. Okay. Now, I remember when I was in Houston, they were pretty critical about you dumping just concrete on the ground. So you, I don't know if it, you need plastic or a concrete box or what, but I remember they were pretty rough over there. They didn't want you just dumping anywhere. You had to put a bag or a sock. Um, works, what works good is a trash bag. One of them construction 55 gallon trash bags, put it over the hose, twist it around, and all the sand and rock will stay in the bag, the water will come out on the ground. Works good. Right? So, I kick the trap door open, and whatever the rock valve didn't pick up, it's usually about a five gallon bucket, sand and rock. It won't pick up. Drop that, it'll drop on the ground. 
uh -huh. take the reducer off, and when it's in reverse, the pump is, I'll stick the hose in there. And I'll just keep reversing it. What I'll do is it'll suck the water in, the rock will switch, and then it'll push it out back into the hopper down. Right? In reverse. Mm -hmm. And if you look in here why it's moving, you can actually see it. There's daylight in there. You can actually see it being cleaned. I spent about maybe three minutes in there, let it stroke over, boom, 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 boom. Let's clean up, stop, put the reducer back on. At the end of the reducer, I put my sponge. Put your hose up, <clears throat> fill the hopper all the way up, push the sponge out. <clears throat> now your hose is clean. Once the sponge pops out, bust your clamps loose, I throw everything back in the truck. While I'm doing that, I pull the reducer up and I fill up another hopper full of water. Huh? <clears throat> that way when you get done, you can wash your hands up, wash your clamps up, wash your water hose up, throw it on there, kick it off, wash your shoes up, throw the reducer on, you're gone. Easy. Grease your machine and remove the water from the water box. <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> Always remove your water from the water box. And just like on um, uh, when you were pumping, If you're priming out, usually you're going to plug on the prime out. But you, you can feel where it gets hard, 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 soft. You put the machine in reverse, you know where the plug is right here. It's back a few times, shake it out, put it back together, put it forward, let's go. Yeah, I usually, when I prime out, I usually do about a click and a half a second. Boom, boom, nothing faster than that. Anything faster than that, the concrete will jump over the water too slow and it'll just push the water and it'll half move in the pipe. Nothing on the ceiling. Plug you. You want a mediocre speed. I'm, uh, if you had a pump then I'm, I'm sure you know about what it's going to be different from the one you're probably running. So, you know, you might plug two or three times so you figure out where the sweet spot is, you know. Usually I'll run it all the way out and then I'll turn it a half a, or a turn and a half in. Prime out. Okay, I plug. I'll turn it in twice on the next shot. Hmm, that did a little better. I'll turn it maybe two and a half. Hmm, got it. On the foremost, you should, you know, make it through 125 foot with a slick pack, relatively easy. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, so, you're going to change your oil and your main filter at how many hours? <laughs> uh, come on! <laughs> Every how many hours? Cada cuantas horas cambiamos los filtros y los aceites. Uh, 250, 250. 6,500. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, yeah, 1,250. 1, no, 250. Yeah, 250. Cada 250. Yeah. Use a good oil, you know, um, synthetic blend, 10W30. It'll last you, those engines last forever. They really will. But you've got to keep, keep it on the oil. Um, the trap door has a rubber seal in it, um, so when you wash out and, and you're washing out, just make sure you catch it on the, the trap door because there's a rubber seal up there. When you slam it, it's got concrete rock, and you put it and hit it with a hammer, it'll rip the seal. It's going to leak. So, and that's about it. I think she'll be able to do it with that, right? Or do, should we leave it in more? Uh, no, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah, they always leak like that because it's just water. Yeah. Normally when you put concrete in there, the concrete seals it all up. It's just water. It's not supposed to hold water. <laughs> okay. Okay, vamos a ver la última parte. I'm gonna turn the main, main screw on. You got power?
the concrete gauge. That's for how much are on the piston. Not at the ass end or not at the first of the hose. Just what's on that piston trying to push the concrete. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, they go, well, how much pressure you got? Well, I know how much I have just on the piston head. Not all the way out there. It drops so drastically as you, the further you go out. Right? So that's what you're measuring. That's when you, when you see that. Um, through three inch, three inch you're running or two inch? He's going to be running three and then at the end he's going to have a couple of two. Ah, okay. So um, three inch into two, so you're going to go through reducer. So you're going to be, um, say, at a general 150 feet, you're going to be at about 110 bar, 105 bar. Mm -hmm. That's about where you're going to be. Um, if it's too dry, if you're trying to do, you know, headers on a house slab or something like that, you're, you're going to be pretty high. You're going to be in the 200 range. They're going to be doing chakri swimming pools exclusively. So you're always going to stay high. Yeah, high pressure always. Yeah. So you're going to be you're going to be in the 200 range. Okay. You're going to see a drastic di difference. Um, you have a three inch slump coming out, and it's like curb mix, and you add 10 gallon. You're going to see it go, you know, from 200 down to 150 real quick. It don't take much water to change the variance. You know what I mean? But then you add 10 gallons, it might not stick on the chicken wire either and fall <laughs> off. So, but you're going to stay you're going to stay in the 200 range. Okay. Mm -hmm. One last question is uh, that they had was, how do you remove if they need to replace any of the wear parts? Like, how do they remove the actual rock valve? Okay, so, um, to get to the rock valve, you're going to take the hopper off, right? And there's uh, two, four, six bolts. And then you're going to come over here. You're going to take your line and hook them together. That we don't lose any oil or not much oil. Take the hopper off. Boom. You take your transition off, right? Take your keyway off, and then spin your main acorn off, right? This face plate will come off. Boom. Drop to the ground. If you want to, if you want to replace the mirror plate that's adjoined to this, you have to take this off. <laughs> you take these four bolts off and knock this off. There'll be four other bolts in there. You take them four bolts off, and that plate will fall off. Okay. Then you got the rock valve with the cutting ring, compression seal, and the wear ring, right? You're gonna take There's one retaining with a flapper, um, key stop to call it. You, you take that off and then the dowel pin will come right out. You, at the bottom of that shift here is a bolt. See where my finger is? Uh -huh. You take that off and that shift lever will come all the way off. Now you can take the rock out. Come off into the SN. That'll expose your wear plate and your cutting ring. These two bolts here, here, and on the other side, take off that wear plate. Get the ball off. Clean the back of it off. Put your new wear plate on. Put your cutting ring back in the kid or in the rock valve. Slide them back together. Put your shift lever back on. The key stop. The valve pin. Put the base plate back on. You're done. Sounds easy. Mm -hmm. Say like when you see Messi playing soccer, you, it's easy. <laughs> it doesn't seem like he's doing much, but it's very, very hard work. <laughs> um, we have documents um, that you know, shows you uh, um, and illustrated on a paper what's yeah. supposed to go in there. Not so much how to replace everything, but how everything looks together. Together, right? Okay. So you can kind of visualize. Okay, I need to take this. Yeah. So if you ever need to do that, let us know. We'll send you the documents. Uh, yeah. Really. Alrighty, thank you, Harold. Yep. Appreciate it. Yep. You guys have a safe trip. Thank you. Talk to you guys later. You have any problems? You call. Thank you. Okay. All right, bud. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, you can go to our website, liveequipment.com, and you can see a complete list of equipment we have available for sale. Or just keep navigating through this channel. Have a great day.